Today, we'll hear about another major milestone on the journey to finding Earth's twin. Today's discovery is a tantalizing indication that with time, Kepler may find true Earth analogs, if they exist. We're getting closer and closer to discovering the so-called Goldilocks planet that is both Earth-like and in a habitable zone. Remarks and then take questions here at NASA Ames, followed by our phone bridge. Natalie? Thanks, John. So before we get to the uh, discovery uh, that you'll be hearing about, um, I'd like to share some other news with you. Our, our team has just finished combing through an additional quarter's worth of data to identify new planet candidates. Slide, I can communicate to you the results of that catalog by plotting the size of the planet candidate versus the orbital period on the x-axis. And some horizontal lines are added there for guidance to show you different uh, reference points, the Earth, Neptune, and Jupiter. It's the simplest spin-flip transition after the 21 centimeter hydrogen line that most people are familiar with. This is an emission that occurs when the spin of the electron orbiting the nucleus shifts from one direction to the other, and an emission uh, at radio frequencies results. Um, Rood and Bania argued that uh, radio astronomers on other worlds might be more tolerant of transmitters operating at this higher frequency thus keeping their skies quiet for the study of hydrogen, the most abundant element in the universe. It's on. Uh, Eric Ham with Nature Magazine. Um, I want to make sure I understand the, the um, statistics you just gave us, Natalie. Uh, uh, 54, sorry, 48 uh, in the habitable zone, but there's also 207 Earth-sized candidates. Mm -hmm. What's the Venn diagram of those? Was that the 10 that you're talking about? That's the 10.